In 2011, the U.S. troops, or to be specific, the United States Strategic Command, created a military plan for a military mission that involved comprehensive details for defensive operations as well as offensive operations and how they should be implemented. Basically, this book had everything they needed to defend themselves in a war. But it turns out that the opponent of this war isn't Russia or China. It isn't even human. This military plan was created to stop zombies. Which begs to question, what is Con Plan 8888, and why is the military preparing for a zombie attack? I honestly thought zombies only lived in science fiction all this time. Well, it's looking like I was wrong. The origins of the plan can be traced to some training exercises held in 2009 and 2010, during which young officers participating in the Joint Operational Planning and Execution System realized the potential upsides to planning for a possible zombie attack, and that gave birth to Con Plan 8888. The document is on the internet, and we even attached a link to download it in the description below. Now, at first, when researching this topic, I thought maybe there was a misunderstanding somewhere? Sure, the American government, at least to my knowledge, is known for setting up what I call planners, whose job it is to imagine what might go wrong or cause a war in the future, and then come up with military and civilian solutions to deal with these risks. Over the years, American war planners have made plans for everything from a nuclear war with the Soviet Union, to an enemy invasion of the US mainland, an attempt to kill the president or destroy the White House, and even on how to respond to a huge asteroid or comet hitting Earth. And yes, they do have numerous backup plans ready in case World War Z becomes a documentary instead of a movie. Fun fact, Russia has an agreement to help the US should aliens attack. As with other backup plans, these are kept very hidden, but they give the military ways to fight a wide range of anything, at least as well as our current technology allows. So imagine my surprise when I found out Zombie was part of the list, and with a strong disclaimer that says, This plan was not actually designed as a joke. During the summers of 2009 and 2010, while training augmentees from a local training squadron about the JOPP, Members of a USS TRA TCOM component found out, by accident, that the hyperbole involved in writing a zombie survival plan actually provided a very useful and effective training tool. In other words, the 16-page document had everything on dealing with zombie attacks from inception to total eradication. It was a well-detailed tactical plan. And unlike government documents that are classified and then maybe released decades later under the Freedom of Information Act, this document was never classified. In such, it was left unclassified so that it could be used by as many people as possible during a time of crisis. This document was created to come up with a full contingency planning guidance for military actions to protect non-infected humans from the dangers posed by a zombie horde, because zombies are, well, a threat to all humans. The military has to be ready to protect all human life and provide support to any human group, even to those who are usually considered enemies. This document aims to achieve three things. One, create and maintain a strong defense environment to keep humans safe from zombies. Two, if necessary, carry out actions that will, if ordered, eliminate zombie threats to human safety. Three, help civil authorities keep the peace and bring back basic services during and after a zombie attack. Not gonna lie, it's a solid plan. Military personnel are basically given the freedom to eliminate any threats of zombies by any means necessary, because according to them, zombie infections could seriously threaten national security and the economic activities that keep our way of life going. According to Conplan, we have like eight different types of zombies. Starting the list is the pathogenic zombies. These type of zombie life forms are created after an organism is infected by a virus or bacteria or some other form of contagion. Which is interesting because in June of 2024, Japan had a high case of flesh-eating virus. But maybe I'm overthinking things. Luckily, some of the viruses that cause pathogenic zombies can be killed by ultraviolet light, which is what our sun dishes out to us for free. So this won't be a problem that much. RNA, or ribonucleic acid, which is part of most viruses, can't function well when exposed to UV light. At best, UV light can stop viruses from making copies of themselves in healthy cells. The sun also makes zombies of this kind experience painful photosensitivity as a result of sunlight exposure. 
For this reason, these type of zombies are only expected to move at night. The next zombies on this list are radiation zombies. These are zombie life forms that are created after an organism is infected by an extreme dosage of electromagnetic or particle radiation. This next one sounds like something from Dungeons and Dragons called evil magic zombies. These zombie life forms were created via some form of occult experimentation in what might otherwise be referred to as evil magic. Honestly, I was gonna laugh it off, but hey, Adolf Hitler spent resources on the occult and had a section of his army that was dedicated to occultic things. Even men and women of old were in one secret society or the other, so who knows, it might be worth considering. Then we have Space Zombie. These zombie life forms originate from space or were created by toxic contamination of the Earth's environment via some form of extraterrestrial toxin or radiation. Now, under the space zombies, we have the zombie satellites, but they're not necessarily harmful unless they deorbit without permission and kill lots of people. Usually these types only threaten SATCOM services like DirecTV. The first thing that came to my mind when reading this section was a zombie transformer. Is that what the military was saying? That not only do we have aliens and zombies, but we also have transformers? But it turns out the reason this was included in the plan was because of an incident that happened on April 5th, 2010, where a satellite named Galaxy 15 ceased responding to commands sent to it by controllers on the ground, and for eight months just drifted and even interfered with other satellite signals near it. It wasn't until the 23rd of December of the same year that the company was successfully able to regain control over the satellite, so maybe they do have a reason for being worried. The next thing on the list was weaponized zombies, and these types of zombies were created intentionally through bio or biomechanical engineering with the sole purpose of being used as weapons. The movie The Crazies shows the most common type of weaponized zombies, in which people are turned into zombies by exposure to toxic gases. Number six is the symbiont-induced zombies, and these zombies are caused by a symbiont life form being introduced into a naturally healthy host. I think the Marvel movie Venom falls into this list. However, once zombieism has happened, there is no known way to save the organism, not even if the symbiont is taken away. Next, and I kid you not, is the vegetarian zombies. These types of zombies do not threaten humans and can easily be made from any source that I've mentioned before. Modeled after the famous game Plants vs. Zombies, these zombies eat only plants. As a result, they can destroy a lot of trees or wipe out basic food items that people need, like rice or corn. The last one is the chicken zombie. At this point, I was ready to throw in the towel. I mean, space zombies, satellite zombies, vegan zombies, and now chicken zombies? I thought I had wasted my time until I saw that the chicken zombie had been proven to exist. Chicken zombies were first written about in Jonathan N. Forrester's online piece, Zombie Chickens Taking Over California, on December 4th, 2006. And this happens when chicken farmers use carbon monoxide to euthanize old hens that can't lay eggs anymore. The hens are then put in big piles to break down. When buried, the hens look dead, but for some reason, they come back to life and dig themselves out from the piles of dead chickens. When these chicken zombies get to the surface, they stagger around for a while before they finally die a second death from organ failure. Seeing chicken zombies is actually scary, and anyone who witnesses such a thing will likely become a vegetarian. Luckily, they don't seem to be a direct threat to people. I didn't want to believe in chicken zombies. I mean, come on. We as a human race eat chicken more than anything. Imagine eating a defective one. Nah, I, I didn't want to believe it. So I did a little research on it, and one thing led to another, and I found out that zombification is almost like a normal thing in the animal kingdom. So apparently there is a brain-stealing parasite that turns snails into zombies. These things are called green-branded brood sac. They are worms, and they live inside the snail's eye stalks and take over their brains. It then pulses, making the snail look like a moving caterpillar, sometimes making the snail dance to get the attention of birds. Once the bird eats the parasite, it grows up into an adult, mates with other adults, and makes eggs that are then released into the bird's waste, starting the cycle all over again. Here is a video of a zombie snail. Now, this is a disclaimer, and I must warn you, what you're about to see is not pretty at all. So I really hope you're not eating as you watch.
The next zombie thing is the zombie ant. The Ophiocordyceps unilateris fungus only wants to do one thing, spread itself. The fungus, which grows in tropical woods, affects a hunting ant through spores that connect to and break through the ant's shell and slowly change how it acts. As the illness gets worse, the ant has to leave its nest to find a warmer, more wet place where the fungus can grow. The ant has to get down to a spot about 10 inches above the ground, slam its jaws into a leaf vein on the north side of a plant, and then wait to die. In the meantime, the fungus eats the insides of its victims until it's ready for the last step. A few days after the ant dies, the fungus sends a growing body out through the base of the ant's head. This uses the ant's dried out body as a launch pad to spread its seeds to new ants. As with every zombie story, there is a time when affected ants look like they're not sick at all, and the rest of the colony doesn't notice them. Which in the ant world is not normal, because social insects like ants have something called social immunity, which means that sick members of the group are kicked out so that no one else gets sick, but yet they can't really detect this zombie ant. Cordyceps is known to attack ants, but the question has been raised if it's possible for it to change over time and control people. Then, the one that freaked me out was when scientists came out to tell us that there are hordes of viruses that have been shut off from humanity for more than 42,000 years thanks to the ice caps, and now, thanks to global warming and the ice caps melting, it could be released, infecting people with diseases we don't even understand yet, resulting in a new epidemic. Researchers have already found strains of these Methuselah germs, which are ironically also called zombie viruses. Geneticist Jean-Michel Clavier of ex marseille University led a group of scientists in 2014, and they found live viruses in Siberia and proved that they could still infect single-cell creatures even though the viruses had been frozen for thousands of years. Another study, which came out last year, showed that different virus types existed in seven different places in Siberia and could infect cells that were grown in a lab. One piece of the virus was 48,500 years old. Scientists have started to make plans for an Arctic tracking network that would help them find the first cases of a disease caused by these zombie microorganisms that lived a long time ago. Affected people would also be quarantined and given expert medical care in order to stop the spread. Now, I know it might look like I'm overreaching or assuming things, and you might be right, but I can't help to think that when you add 1 plus 1, it's giving 2, which in this case could mean a zombie outbreak. The military came up with six phases on how to combat a zombie situation. Phase 0 is known as shape the environment, or day-to-day -day operations. As part of its regular duties, the military will carry out monitoring of the environment to look for changes in disease carriers that could lead to zombieism. The Military Center for Combating Weapons of Mass Destruction will be in charge of making sure that all Phase Zero shaping activities are carried out and coordinated with other federal, state, and local agencies. And every personnel will always wear a hazmat suit just to be safe. Basically, Phase Zero is the planning phase. Then we enter Phase One which is known as deter. In phase one, it's all about stopping the brains behind the no brains. Terrorist cells or enemy nations could be creating and weaponizing zombies, or using them for nefarious purposes. So phase one's major goal would be to stop these people from making or deploying pathogens that turn people into zombies. Phase two, AKA seize the initiative. This will be more of doing a total recall of all assigned troops back to the country. Now, this might be alarming to other nations, if they just randomly see the US stack up troops in the millions like they're preparing for war, so to avoid any confusion with nuclear armed peers like Russia or North Korea, this phase will also include building trust so that leaders in these countries don't think that the military's plans to fight off zombies are actually plans for war. Dominate is phase three. Whenever an order with the words Allertord, Warnord, Opord or Exord is received, all forces will engage the zombies, and their corpses will be burnt thoroughly. Lastly, phases 4 and 5 are combined into one, and in this phase, stabilizing the environment and restoring civil authority is the goal. Forces will start with local reconnaissance operations no earlier than 40 days after phase 3 operations start. Their goal is to find out how bad the zombie threat is still, 
how safe the environment is physically and epidemiologically, and how basic services like water, power, sewage infrastructure, and land, air, and water lines of communication are doing. All reports are sent back to HQ, and they will be sent in clear text over private communications. This way, if any remote survivors read those communications, they will be able to connect with the nearest military force, which makes sense. However, there was one thing that caught my attention in the document. It was in the last section of the document. To summarize, because of how easy it can be for a zombie outbreak to spread in minutes, it is advised that if someone in your party gets cornered off, you should leave them to their fate. You are not allowed to go back for family, friends, or anyone who unfortunately couldn't get away fast enough from zombies. This reminds me of the Walking Dead scene where Shane left the fat man to the zombies as he escaped with the drugs for Rick's son. Maybe that scene was the motivation for this rule. I don't know. It also talks about finding sources for upkeep. Rainwater will be very important for human survival, and we should hardly use groundwater from streams and rivers because it will become unreliable, since it will be difficult to determine if the water is a zombie infection source or not. Also, people who do not have direct shelter in a sturdy structure that protects them from the direct effects of air currents that could carry pathogens or toxins or direct exposure to radiation will be at increased risk of contamination, injury, and maybe death. Look. I am not kidding, this document is very detailed, even talking about the limitations that the military will face, like not having adequate tools and materials to make a proper zombie defense, or running out of resources in less than 30 days, or how the military doesn't actually have a zombie unit that is trained on fighting zombies. Everything included in this document actually can be implemented against a zombie invasion, and I'm inclined to believe there is an 85% chance that if you as a civilian follow the guidelines of this document, you would survive a zombie horde with ease, not to talk of military units. Which made a lot of people think, why would the government have a very detailed zombie plan? Unless they already know something, we don't. Despite how exhaustive this document is, the same government that had a disclaimer that this document wasn't a joke or a prank also came out to tell us we shouldn't take this document seriously, adding another disclaimer in the document that this fictitious plan was created by junior military officers undergoing training related to the Department of Defense's Joint Operational Planning and Execution System, JOPES, the formalized process by which the department conducts all contingency planning and execution. In an effort to learn the JOPES process, and to do so in a more interesting way, the students were assigned to this completely fictitious scenario and directed to use JOPES to develop a written contingency plan. Using this fictitious scenario avoided concerns over the use of classified information, it resolved sensitivity to using real-world nations or scenarios, and it better engaged the students. In simpler words, it's all fake. Don't get me wrong, the plans are real, but the opponent isn't real. Let me explain what I mean. Zombies were picked because the idea behind using zombies in the first place was ridiculous. And remember I said this was really detailed. So imagine instead of zombie you see China, or Nigeria, or any country. It'll be harder for the US military to come out and say it's all fiction. This can result in a political fallout that happens when the public wrongly believes that a made-up training scenario is actually a real plan and trust the media, they will spin the narrative to make it look like it's leaked classified documents to invade another nation. But with zombies, not so much. And even if people still don't believe that the plan was just a training exercise, the fallout or damage is still very low. No country will feel threatened or raise up their defenses. And just like they said, people saw it and thought it was a leaked document from the government that zombies exist even though it's written right there on the document that, first of all, this is not classified in any way, and secondly, it's all fiction. That being said, I'm actually happy that at least one country has a plan to stop zombies. I still get freaked out remembering the zombie snail. What if one human mistakenly eats a zombie snail? All it takes for chaos to reign is just one infected human. But with this plan, I can sleep at night knowing that there will at least be something done about it. I do hope your country at least has a zombie plan. You may never know what might just happen. And if you still believe we are far off from a zombie apocalypse, maybe this zombie woman will change your mind.